Good morning and welcome everyone to our video update. The Union Hall office will be open during this current layoff. The hall continues to be rented most weekends and many evenings. There's lots of activity going on here at the hall. Step Science is scheduled to be in the Union Hall every Wednesday from now through November 1st. Their hours will be 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you have placed an order for your orthotics, check all your email folders to see when your pickup date is. Um, there will also be two benefit reps working out of the Union Hall each day. Contact information will be available at the end of the video. We have also established a resource center here at the Hall for our members to drop in and utilize more information will be available later in the video. Tickets are still available for the 7th Annual Persons Day Gala, which takes place this Saturday, October 21st, 2023. Please see the website for more information on how to purchase your tickets. Around the local, uh, thank you to all the members who took the time to stop by the GM Woodstock Parks Distribution Center and join in their picket line last week. The newly organized auto plant, Sidika, went on strike on Sunday, October 15th, 2023. There are two different locations in London. One location is at 2530 Innovation Drive, London. The second location is 425 Sovereign Road, London. If anyone lives in the vicinity and has some free time, drop by and walk the picket line with these new Unifor members. In the community, the Unifor Local 8th Community Service Committee will be entering in the Ingersoll Santa Claus Parade and hosting the annual Teddy Bear Christmas here at the Hall. Please watch a local website and Facebook page for more information and opportunities to volunteer. Also in the community, the Ingersoll community, there are many opportunities to volunteer. The Stitch Supper Club, which is worked by Linda Smith, a Unifor Local 8 retiree. Linda is the president and volunteer coordinator for Stitch. This is a great opportunity to volunteer and help our community. Also, you have children in the high school, sign them up and bring along their community service hours for their high school diploma. Below is the contact information for the Stitch Supper Club if you would like to volunteer. You can contact Linda Smith at lindajsmith at simpatico.ca or you can also call her at 226-378-4798. Also, the Salvation Army Kettle Program is always looking for people to help during the holiday season. The Ingersoll and District Inner Church Hamper Program is coming up soon. When information becomes available, we will post on our local website and on our Facebook page. In closing, if you require any additional information during this layoff, please call or stop by the office and we will direct you to the appropriate person who can help you with your concerns. Thank you. Hello and thank you for joining us again for our video. I'll start with Ford bargaining. Back in late August, Ford was selected first to enter into bargaining. Therefore, the Ford contract becomes a pattern that will be set for the big three. Again, this is not our contract, this is strictly the big three. They ratified their contract with only a 50% approval. Why was it so low? We believe it was three main issues. Most people were expecting a higher pension increase. That seemed to be a very big issue. The $2,000 Christmas bonus and the loss of it was a tough pill to swallow, and a lot of noise were coming from the UAW. The, U the UAW have been very um, vocal in the media. However, they are now in their second month of a strike. That could be over in a week. However, it could last another month yet. The UAW and Detroit 3 seem to be in agreement on the length of their contract, with both parties seeming to want around a four and a half year agreement. I'm not sure that why they would take such a long contract. You are locked in for a long period of time, and things can change dramatically in four and a half years. The economics of this contract for the big three are basically summed up as a 20% increase in wages over three years for production and a 25% increase over three years for the trades. The UAW would have to significantly increase those wages for a half year, for 4.5 years just to keep up. Um, pensions did seem to be a major area of concern. The production increase um, for Ford was increased by $5 and actually for GM $5.60 and $6.60 for trades at GM. Um, the multiplier now for GM for production is 7360 and for the trades it's now 8760. The UAW, for example, for, um, for the uh, pension, their uh, multipliers are $51 for production and 53 for trades. We're about 25 to $30 ahead of them already in our multipliers, which makes it extremely tough to gain more uh, traction in the areas of pensions. As for the overall contract, 
the economics are very good. A 10% increase for production and almost a 13% increase for trades immediately was a much needed boost. The top rate goes right off the bat for production to 42.39 and for the trades it goes to 51.97. The monthly health care cost of $33 a month has been eliminated for both active and retirees. COLA has been reinstated with the formula that we're used to starting in September of 2024. The grow-in for new hires has gone from eight years to four years. And uh, what used to come after eight years now comes after one year, one year such as uh, legal plan, sub-benefits, dependent scholarship, et cetera. The sub-plan. Uh, Ford was able to make huge gains in the area of sub, which uh, GM followed with pattern. Uh, they now have got rid of the 65% level. Sub is now at a 70% level with no reduction to a 50% level going forward. Um, in the area of paid time off, they've added two more long weekends each year, Family Day every February, and Truth and Reconciliation Day, um, as long as that day falls during the week and not on the weekends. Uh, there was also a $10,000 signing bonus and a general increase across the board in all areas of benefits. Um, we just spent the past three weeks bargaining the GM contract in Toronto. Um, that, was a long, that was a long set of bargaining, and it actually took a 13-hour strike just to achieve the pattern. Uh, the final results for the GM uh, bar uh, par bargaining were production 84%, trades 56%, and an overall combined uh, percentage of 80.5, uh, giving them a ratified contract. Okay, our new sub-agreement that we have worked out. Again, to remind people we are not in bargaining, so the contract does not affect our members until next year when we enter into bargaining. However, we were able to work out a new sub-agreement while we were in Toronto. During the time we were in Toronto, we met with GM numerous times to discuss the situation at our plant. No plant has undergone more downtime than our plant over the past three and a half years, and now you can add five more months to that total. We were not in bargaining, but we do have a voice, but no vote in Toronto. However, Unifor National and the heads of GM Canada were in the hotel, and we had many discussions on our downtime, on our members' EI, sub, imp, and other, impact, and other things that will impact our members. These discussions led to possible improvements for our current sub-plan. We gave them many situations uh, of examples of the situations faced by our members. For instance, we had sub-pay at the 50% level. For some members, that was only approximately $1 extra a week just to go to the 50% level. Um, some members were out of everything. We actually had three or four members who had already hit the level of no EI, no sub, no imp, they actually had nothing, and more members would have gained that every, or would have fallen to those levels every couple of weeks. Unifor National, specifically Lana Payne, were instrumental in helping our membership. Once the 70% level for sub was negotiated for Ford and then at GM, Lana was determined to help us attain the same level for our members, even though we aren't in our contract. So with our new sub agreement, some of our gains include, um, this is for, provided you are active in the plant in September or October, you will now be getting 70% sub for a minimum of 36 weeks. There will be no step down to the 50% level going forward. Also, full dental coverage provided you're collecting sub will continue. People who could not get back to work for the 170 hours will have their pension credit covered for the year. If you're currently on parental leave, SNA, family care, or any other kind of approved leave, um, you will enter into the program upon your return to work. I would like to say a big thank you to the salary leadership team at our plant and GM Canada. We had many meetings, but ultimately they had to agree for our members to gain these much needed benefits and help them throughout the upcoming layoffs. One other item we were also able to negotiate was a local 88 resource center located here at our union hall. It is going to be staffed by two of our members. Normally in a layoff period, we would have an action center and try to find work for all of our members. However, since these are not permanent layoffs, we do not qualify for government money. During these times when we had our action center, our benefit alternates have always worked in the action center. That was one of the reasons why we chose Emily Jarris, our current uh, benefits alternate, to become one of the leads of our local 88 resource center. She will be joined by Julie Franklin. Julie is currently Spencer O'Brien's alternate in assembly. She is extremely outgoing, always volunteers for various functions, and is very eager to learn. Emily and Julie will work together at the Union Hall, 
They will be on the video later and will explain in different ideas they are working on. We hope you stop by and pay them a visit sometime. Postings. There's a, comp a computer glitch with regards to the postings that is supposed to be fixed by today. The posting confirmations will be going up soon for the battery jobs. These members that get confirmed should be expected to be working in November full time. We have had talks with the engineers and have asked them to come up with a video similar to what we did with the Bright Drop program that will show the jobs on each team when we go, when we go to launch the, uh, the battery jobs in the new uh, department. That way people hopefully won't have to post completely blind. They are looking into the video and said it would take a couple months, but they hope to have it done sometime by December. So our plan would be to get those, the video posted, let people look at all the jobs, and then post the jobs for the battery plant once people get a bit of a, get used to seeing what the jobs look like. That is about it for now. We hope to now have another video in a month's time, and hopefully we can shoot that from the battery department and show you what is happening. Stay safe, stay in touch, if you're out and about or just going for a drive, stop by the Union Hall and see what's going on. On behalf of the implant, take care.